Good evening. Let's read some more. Just eat uh, some food and uploading video. So I like to read this history of Airbus. Okay, the zoom was on. Yes, I need a minute <coughs> to go to bed. History of Airbus. Today's Airbus SE is the product of international consolidation in the European aerospace industry tracing way before the formation of the Airbus Industry GIE Consortium in 1970. In 2000, the European Aeronautic Defence and Space Company, EADS, NV was established through the merger of Aerospatial Matra of France and DASA from Germany, and that subsequently bought Constructions Aeronauticas from Spain. In addition to other subsidiaries pertaining to security and space activities, EADS owned 100% of the pre-existing Eurocopter SA, established in 1992, as well as 80% of Airbus Industry GIE. In 2001, Airbus Industry GIE was reorganized as Airbus SAS, a simplified joint stock company. In 2006, EADS acquired the remaining 20% shares of Airbus Industry GIE from BAE Systems. EADS NV was renamed Airbus Group NV in 2014 and finally Airbus SE in 2015. Due to the commercial aircraft division's prominence within Airbus SE with it representing the largest part of the corporation's activities, Airbus S.S was published to be merged into the parent company in January 2017, but it was never done. Airbus SE remains therefore as the holding company for the commercial aircraft subsidiary Airbus SAS while also being the parent company of the other two divisions Airbus Defense and Space and Airbus Helicopters. Timeline, Edit. Structural Evolution of Airbus SE. 1v2. T3. E. December, 1970 January, 1992 July, 2000 September, 2000 January, 2001 December, 2006 April, 2009 September, 2010 January, 2014 May, 2015 January, 2017 April, 2017. European Aeronautic Defence and Space Company NV Airbus Group NV Airbus Group SE Airbus SE Airbus Industry GIE Airbus SAS Airbus Military SAS Airbus Defence and Space SAS EADS Defence and Security Casadian SAS Astriam SAS EADS Astriam SAS Eurocopter SAS Eurocopter SAS Airbus Helicopters SAS Background, Edit. 1972-2000, Airbus Industry GIE, Edit. Airbus Industry began as a consortium of European aviation firms formed to compete with American companies such as Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, and Lockheed. While many European aircraft were innovative, even the most successful had small production runs. Factors favoring American aircraft manufacturers included the size of the United States which made air transport popular, a 1942 Anglo-American agreement entrusting transport aircraft production to the U.S., and the World War II legacy of a profitable, vigorous, powerful and structured aeronautical industry in America. By the mid-1960s, Several European aircraft manufacturers had drawn up competitive designs, but were aware of the risks of such a project. 
For example, in 1959 Hawker Siddeley had advertised an Airbus version of the Armstrong Whitworth AW.660 Argosy, which would be able to lift as many as 126 passengers on ultra-short routes at a direct operating cost of 2D per seat mile. The European industry began to accept, along with their governments, that collaboration was required to develop such an aircraft and to compete with the more powerful U.S. manufacturers. Negotiations began over a European collaborative approach and at the 1965 Paris Air Show the major European airlines informally discussed their requirements for a new Airbus capable of transporting 100 or more passengers over short to medium distances at a low cost. The same year Hawker Siddeley, at the urging of the UK government, teamed with Breguet and Nord to study Airbus designs. The Hawker Siddeley forward slash Breguet forward slash Nord Group's HBN 100 became the basis for the continuation of the project. By 1966 the partners were Sud Aviation, later Aerospatiale, France, RB Atstminskft Airbus, later Deutsche Airbus, West Germany, and Hawker Siddeley, UK. A request for funding was made to the three governments in October, 1966. On the 25th of July, 1967, the three governments agreed to proceed with the proposal. In the two years following this agreement, both the British and French governments expressed doubts about the project. The Memorandum of Understanding had stated that 75 orders must be achieved by the 31st of July, 1968. The French government threatened to withdraw from the project due to its concern over funding all of the Airbus A300, Concorde and the Dassault Mercure concurrently, but was persuaded by Ziegler to maintain its support. With its own concerns at the A300B proposal in December, 1968, and fearing it would not recoup its investment due to lack of sales, the British government withdrew on 10 April, 1969. West Germany took this opportunity to increase its share of the project to 50%. Given the participation by Hawker Siddeley up to that point, France and West Germany were reluctant to take over its wing design. Thus the British company was allowed to continue as a privileged subcontractor. Hawker Siddeley invested GB pound 35 million in tooling and, requiring more capital, received a GB pound 35 million loan from the West German government. Airbus industry was formally established as a groupment d'interet economic, economic interest group or GIE, on the 18th of December, 1970. It had been formed by a government initiative between France, West Germany and the UK that originated in 1967. Its initial shareholders were the French company Aerospatiale and the West German company Deutsche Airbus, each owning a 50% share. The name Airbus was taken from a non-proprietary term used by the airline industry in the 1960s to refer to a commercial aircraft of a certain size and range, as it was linguistically acceptable to the French. Aerospatiale and Deutsche Airbus each took a 36.5% share of production work, Hawker Siddeley 20% and the Dutch company Fokker VFW 7%. Each company would deliver its sections as fully equipped, ready-to-fly items. In October, 1971 the Spanish company Casa acquired a 4.2% share of Airbus industry, with Aerospatiale and Deutsche Airbus reducing their total stakes to 47.9%. In January, 1979 British Aerospace, which had absorbed Hawker Siddeley in 1977, acquired a 20% share of Airbus industry. The majority shareholders reduced their shares to 37.9%, while CASA retained its 4.2%. The Airbus A300 was to be the first aircraft to be developed, manufactured and marketed by Airbus. 
By early 1967 there a 300 label began to be applied to a proposed 320 seat twin engined airliner. Following the 1967 Tri government agreement, Roger B. Tail was appointed technical director of the A300 development project. B. Tail developed a division of labor that would be the basis of Airbus production for years to come. France would manufacture the cockpit, flight control and the lower center section of the fuselage. Holker Sidele, whose Trident technology had impressed him, was to manufacture the wings. West Germany should make the forward and rear fuselage sections, as well as the upper center section. The Dutch would make the flaps and spoilers. Finally Spain, yet to become a full partner, would make the horizontal tailplane. On the 26th of September 1967 the West German, French and British governments signed a memorandum of understanding in London which allowed continued development studies. This also confirmed Sud Aviation as the lead company, that France and the UK would each have a 37.5% work share with West Germany taking 25%, and that Rolls-Royce would manufacture the engines. In the face of lukewarm support from airlines for a 300-plus seat Airbus A300, the partners submitted the A250 proposal, later becoming the A300B, a 250-seat airliner powered by pre-existing engines. This dramatically reduced development costs, as the Rolls-Royce RB207 to be used in the A300 represented a large proportion of the costs. The RB207 had also suffered difficulties and delays, since Rolls-Royce was concentrating its efforts on the development of another jet engine, the RB211, for the Lockheed L-1011 and Rolls-Royce entering into administration due to bankruptcy in 1971. The A300B was smaller but lighter and more economical than its three-engined American rivals. We showed the world we were not sitting on a nine-day wonder, and that we wanted to realize a family of planes. We won over customers we wouldn't otherwise have won. Now we had two planes that had a great deal in common as far as systems and cockpits were concerned. Gene Roder, chief engineer of Deutsche Airbus, speaking of the A310. In 1972, the A300 made its maiden flight. Its first production model, the A300B2, entered service in 1974. However, the launch of the A300 was largely overshadowed by the similarly timed supersonic aircraft Concorde. Initially the success of the consortium was poor, but orders for the aircraft picked up, due in part to the marketing skills used by Airbus CEO Bernard Lathier, targeting airlines in America and Asia. By 1979 the consortium had 256 orders for a 300, and Airbus had launched a more advanced aircraft, the A310, in the previous year. It was the launch of the A320 in 1987 that guaranteed the status of Airbus as a major player in the aircraft market. The aircraft had over 400 orders before it first flew compared to 15 for the A300 in 1972. 1992-2000, Eurocup to SA, edit. The Eurocup to SA was formed in 1992, through the merger of the helicopter divisions of Aerospatial and DASA. The company's heritage traces back to Buriat and Lyrit Olivier in France and to Messerschmitt and Focke-Wulf in Germany. 2000-2014, European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company NV, edit. Airbus. Estimated 2000, renamed 2017. Aerospatial Matra. Estimated 1999. Aerospatial. Estimated 1970. Matra. Estimated 1937. DASA Estimated 1989 Daimler-Benz Aerospace Unit Estimated 1926 Dornier Flugzeugwerk 
estimated 1922. Messerschmitt Volkau Blanc, MVB, estimated 1968. Casa, Constructions Aeronauticus Sa, estimated 1923. 1 V2, T3, E. In June 1997, British Aerospace Defence Managing Director John Weston commented Europe is supporting three times the number of contractors on less than half the budget of the US. European governments wished to see the merger of their defence manufacturers into a single entity, a European aerospace and defence company. As early as 1995 the German aerospace and defence company Daimler Chrysler Aerospace, DASA, and its British counterpart British Aerospace were said to be eager to create a transnational aerospace and defence company. The two companies envisaged including the French company Aerospatiale, the other major European aerospace company, but only after its privatisation. The first stage of this integration was seen as the transformation of Airbus from a consortium of British Aerospace, DASA, Aerospace Shale and Constructions Aeronauticas into an integrated company, in this aim BAE and DASA were united against the various objections of Aerospace Shale. As well as Airbus, British Aerospace and DASA were partners in the Panavia Tornado and Eurofighter Typhoon aircraft projects. Merger discussions began between British Aerospace and DASA in July 1998, just as French participation became more likely with the announcement that Aerospace Shale was to merge with Maitre and emerge with a diluted French government shareholding. A merger was agreed between British Aerospace Chairman Richard Evans and DASA CEO George Ern Schremp in December 1998. However, when the British General Electric Company put its defense electronics business Marconi Electronic Systems, MES, up for sale on the 22nd of December, 1998, British Aerospace abandoned the DASA merger in favor of purchasing its British rival. The merger of British Aerospace and MES to form BAE Systems was announced on the 19th of January, 1999 and completed on the 30th of November. Evans stated in 2004 that his fear was that an American defense contractor would acquire MES and challenge both British Aerospace and DASA. DASA and the Spanish aircraft company Constructions Aeronauticas agreed to merge, signing a Memorandum of Understanding on the 11th of June, 1999. On the 14th of October, 1999, DASA agreed to merge with Aerospace Shale Matra to create the European Aeronautic Defence and Space Company. The 10th of July, 2000 was day one for the new company, which became the world's second largest aerospace company after Boeing and the second largest European arms manufacturer after BAE Systems. In January, 2001 Airbus industry was transformed from an inherently inefficient consortium structure to a formal joint stock company, with legal and tax procedures being finalized on the 11th of July. Both the ADS and BAE transferred ownership of their Airbus factories to the new Airbus SAS in return for 80% and 20% shares in the new company respectively. In April, 2001, EADS agreed to merge its missile businesses with those of BAE Systems and Alenia Marconi Systems, BAE forward slash Finmechanica, to form MBDA. EADS took a 37.5% share of the new company that was formally established in December 2001 and which thus became the world's second largest missile manufacturer. On the 16th of June, 2003 EADS acquired BAE's 25% share in Astrium, the satellite and space system manufacturer, to become the sole owner. EADS paid £84 million, however due to the loss-making status of the company BAE invested an equal amount for restructuring. It was subsequently renamed EADS Astrium, and had the division's Astrium Satellites, 
Astriam Space Transportation and Astriam Services. In November 2003, EADS announced that it was considering working with Japanese companies and the Japanese METI to develop a hypersonic airliner intended to be a larger, faster, and quieter replacement for the Concorde, which was retired in October the same year. Despite repeated suggestions as early as 2000 that BAE Systems wished to sell its 20% share of Airbus, the possibility was consistently denied by the company. However, on the 6th of April, 2006 BBC News reported that it was indeed to sell its stake, then conservatively valued at £2.4 billion. Due to the slow pace of informal negotiations, BAE exercised its put option, which saw investment bank Rothschild appointed to give an independent valuation. Six days after this process began, Airbus announced delays to the A380 with significant effects on the value of Airbus shares. On the 2nd of June, 2006 Rothschild valued BAE's share at £1.87 billion, well below BAE's analysts and even the ADS expectations. The BAE board recommended that the company proceed with the sale and on the 4th of October, 2006 shareholders voted in favor. The sale was completed on the 13th of October making EADS the sole shareholder of Airbus. In March, 2007, EADS Defense and Security Systems Division was awarded an eight-year, £200 million contract to provide the IT infrastructure for the FIRE control project in the UK. The retention of production and engineering assets by the partner companies in effect made Airbus industry a sales and marketing company. This arrangement led to inefficiencies due to the inherent conflicts of interest that the four partner companies faced. They were both shareholders of, and subcontractors to, the consortium. The companies collaborated on development of the Airbus range, but guarded the financial details of their own production activities and sought to maximize the transfer prices of their sub-assemblies. It was becoming clear that Airbus was no longer a temporary collaboration to produce a single plane as per its original mission statement, it had become a long-term brand for the development of further aircraft. By the late 1980s, work had begun on a pair of new medium-sized aircraft, the biggest to be produced at this point under the Airbus name, the Airbus A330 and the Airbus A340. In the early 1990s the then Airbus CEO Jean Pearson argued that the GIE should be abandoned and Airbus established as a conventional company. However, the difficulties of integrating and valuing the assets of four companies, as well as legal issues, delayed the initiative. In December 1998, when it was reported that British Aerospace and DASA were close to merging, Aerospatial paralyzed negotiations on the Airbus conversion. The French company feared the combined BAE forward slash DASA, which would own 57.9% of Airbus, would dominate the company and it insisted on a 50 forward slash 50 split. However, the issue was resolved in January 1999 when BAE abandoned talks with DASA in favor of merging with Marconi Electronic Systems to become BAE Systems. Then in 2000, three of the four partner companies, Daimler Chrysler Aerospace, successor to Deutsche Airbus, Aerospace Matra, successor to Sudaviation, and CASA, merged to form EADS, simplifying the process. EADS now owned Airbus France, Airbus Deutschland and Airbus Espana, and thus 80% of Airbus industry. BAE Systems and EADS transferred their production assets to the new company, Airbus SAS, in return for shareholdings in that company. Main Article, Airbus A380 in mid-1988 a group of Airbus engineers led by Jean Roder began working in secret on the development of an ultra-high-capacity airliner, UCA, 
both to complete its own range of products and to break the dominance that Boeing had enjoyed in this market segment since the early 1970s with its 747. The project was announced at the 1990 Farnborough Air Show, with the stated goal of 15% lower operating costs than the 747 to 400. Airbus organized four teams of designers, one from each of its partners, Aerospace Ale, Daimler Chrysler Aerospace, British Aerospace, CASA, to propose new technologies for its future aircraft designs. In June, 1994 Airbus began developing its own very large airliner, then designated as a 3XX. Airbus considered several designs, including an off-side-by-side -side combination of two fuselages from the Airbus A340, which was Airbus's largest jet at the time. Airbus refined its design, targeting a 15% to 20% reduction in operating costs over the existing Boeing 747-400. The A3XX design converged on a double-decker layout that provided more passenger volume than a traditional single-deck design. Five A380s were built for testing and demonstration purposes. The first of 380 was unveiled at a ceremony in Toulouse on the 18th of January, 2005, and its maiden flight took place on the 27th of April, 2005. After successfully landing three hours and 54 minutes later, Chief Test Pilot Jax Rosary said flying the A380 had been like handling a bicycle. On the 1st of December, 2005, the A380 achieved its maximum design speed of Mach 0.96. On the 10th of January, 2006, the A380 made its first transatlantic flight to Medellin in Colombia. The Airbus A380 was delayed in October, 2006 due to the use of incompatible software used to design the aircraft. Primarily, the Toulouse assembly plant used the latest version 5 of Katia, made by Dassault, while the design center at the Hamburg factory were using the older and incompatible version 4. The result was that the 530 kilometers of cables wiring throughout the aircraft had to be completely redesigned. Although no orders had been cancelled, Airbus still had to pay millions in late delivery penalties. The first aircraft delivered was to Singapore Airlines on the 15th of October, 2007 and entered service on the 25th of October, 2007 with an inaugural flight between Singapore and Sydney. Two months later Singapore Airlines CEO Chu Chung Sen said that the A380 was performing better than both the airline and Airbus had anticipated burning 20% less fuel per passenger than the airline's existing 747 to 400 fleet. Emirates was the second airline to take delivery of the A380 on the 28th of July, 2008 and started flights between Dubai and New York on the 1st of August, 2008. Quantas followed on the 19th of September, 2008 starting flights between Melbourne and Los Angeles on the 20th of October, 2008. In 2003, Airbus and the Carskoll Group created an Airbus Engineering Center in Russia, which started with 30 engineers and since has emerged as a model of success for Airbus globalization strategy. It was the first engineering facility to open in Europe outside the company's home countries. Equipped with state-of-the-art communications equipment and linked with Airbus engineering sites in France and Germany, the facility performs extensive work in disciplines such as fuselage structure, stress, system installation and design. In 2011, the center employs some 200 engineers who have completed over 30 large-scale projects for the A320. The A330 forward slash A340 and the A380 programs. Russian engineers also performed more than half of all design work on the A330-200F freighter, with its activity related to fuselage structure design, 
floor grids installation and junctions design. The center currently is involved in the A320 Neo Sharklets design development and numerous design works for the A350XWB program. On the 6th of April, 2006 BAE Systems planned to sell its 20% share in Airbus, then conservatively valued at 3.5 billion euros, 4 US dollars and 17 cents billion. Analysts suggested the move to make partnerships with U.S. firms more feasible, in both financial